Well, this morning we're starting a brand new series called Chaos. When life is crazy, when life is out of control, what do you do? Well, right before we jump into that, hey, let me just mention that, uh, man, thanks for coming out and celebrating with our family as Dustin and Mandy got married Friday night. Uh, it was such a fun, fun evening. It was just one of those special nights, and by all of you coming out and attending, uh, it just made that event so much more special to all of us. So thank you very, very much. Uh, this, uh, this series that we're entering into is a series that I want it to be a life-changing series for you. I want, when we finish, for this to have been something that was just down to the grassroots of your life, of where you're able to take something from the Word of God, apply it to your life, and where it really changes you. So we are working hard on making this a life-changing series. We're going to talk, uh, first of all, starting this morning on scheduling. When your schedule is completely out of whack, you don't even know how to, how to even survive the next day. Kay and I experienced this a few years back when our three boys were all in football and they were all practicing at separate fields every single day. On Saturdays, they had three different games, usually at three different fields. I mean, it was absolutely out of control. And we ended up having to call Kay's mom and dad and begging them to come out and stay with us and helping us because, I mean, we were outnumbered, two against three, and we needed help. And I mean, it was just a, a crazy, crazy time in our lives. How do you handle that? What do you do? So we're going to talk about those kinds of things this morning. Then also in this series, we're going to talk about financial chaos. When things aren't going well financially and when you, you're out of control in that area of life and we're bringing in a world-class speaker for that day, Dave Martin, who travels a lot with Joel Osteen. This guy is hilarious and you're, you're not going to want to miss this. He is an expert in finances and I want to tell you his message is going to help you tremendously. Then we're going to talk about moral chaos. On that week, our own Dustin Woodward is going to be speaking that morning in that weekend service and, and he's going to be talking about uh, immorality. Much of that is going to be on sexuality. Now, Dustin just got married Friday night, and I cannot wait to hear what he's got to say on this subject. And so you don't want to miss it. I want to tell you, when he speaks, you never know what he's going to say. And I just noticed that Dustin and Mandy slipped into the service. Good seeing you guys. Um, I don't know what's wrong with you, Dustin. I mean, you can't even stay away from church on your honeymoon. You are a sick, sick person. You need celebrate recovery. That's what you need. But, uh, hey, great seeing you guys this morning. And then also in this series, uh, I'll be taking two different topics, and I'll be talking about the family, the power of the family, what God uh, has, has really meant for the family, then also raising godly children. And so this is going to hit all of us in some area of our life when we're talking about chaos. This morning we have a guest speaker, and you're going to thoroughly enjoy Enjoy Chris Farley. Chris uh, is here from the river in Mobile, Alabama. And I want to introduce uh, Melinda, his wife. Melinda, would you stand and would you give her a big hand? When we were on vacation this summer, we got to stop uh, by the river and uh, visit there, and it was just one of those incredible experiences. Uh, they took this church when it was a handful of people, I mean, almost no one there, and today it is a fast-growing, exciting, large church. And many, many months ago, we launched a 212 satellite church there, and, and uh, it was our, our 212 youth ministry. They took those principles and applied those, and they took off, and a couple of weeks ago, they had over 230 students. I mean, it is just exploding there, and a lot of great things are happening. So uh, the River and Copper Point Church have teamed up, and we're very close together, working together, and Chris uh, is a great, great friend and a great friend of Copper Point Church. This is their first time to be with us, and so I ask him to speak this morning, and you're going to enjoy this message on the power of scheduling. Would you welcome Chris Farley as he comes to the platform this morning? Chris, man, what a great privilege it is to have you here. How's Copper Point doing this morning? Woohoo! Good to see you guys. Man, I'm having the time of my life here. I just want to say how much I appreciate the pastors of Copper Point Church. Um, the Woodwards are wonderful people. They're people of integrity, um, faithful, serving here for over 30 years. And it's just unbelievable to see the leadership and how God is, is using them. Love their family, Dustin and uh, the other boys um, have been very close to us, and of course now Mandy's a part of that family, and she had been at our church for approximately seven years, so uh, got a lot invested here now, so we just love this place, and, and we appreciate what God's doing, and this building is unbelievable, isn't it? 
Man, I'm telling you, come on, give yourself a hand. This is great. What God has done, it's, it's, it's miraculous. And I just know that God is blessing you guys with all of these things because he's got plans to do you good and not evil. There's some great things on God's agenda for Copper Point Church. And, and I want to say this also. Just the people here. You guys are wonderful. Everyone has been so friendly uh, from the parking lot attendants to just someone walking through the atrium out there. Everyone has just been so kind and gracious. And that says a lot uh, about this church and, and what God is doing and how the leadership is going forward. So just honored, honored, honored to be here. Uh, if you turn in your Bibles to the book of Ephesians chapter number 5. The book of Ephesians chapter number 5. And as you're turning there, I just want to express how excited I am to be able to launch this exciting new sermon series entitled Chaos. Um, as Pastor said, uh, I'll be doing the initial message. We're going to be talking about chaos in your schedule and how to uh, get a handle on that so that God, you can have God's best and God can start working in your life at a greater level. But I know you're going to want to be at every one of these services because God's going to do a special work uh, for the next couple of weeks, every time you guys get together and discuss this subject. So, as we get into this, I just want to ask you a few questions real quickly. By the raised hand, let's all participate. It's funner like that. By the raised hand, anyone in the building that say, eh, you know what? Every once in a while, I feel a little stressed. Just anyone? Wow, really? Okay. Anyone in the building say, you know what, man? Uh, I feel a little tension in my finances uh, every once in a while. The economy's not real. Oh, hands already going up. Look at that. Was like. <laughs> okay, how many of you, by the raised hand, would say, Chris, man, I wish I had more time to do some things for myself because it seems I'm always doing something for someone else, or I would like to have more time to invest in the people I love or the things I love? How many of you would say, yeah, that's me? See, hands went up all over this room, and there's a reason. It's because we all have something in common, and it's this. We live in a culture, and we are wired in a certain way to where our drift is towards chaotic. It's towards the lesser things instead of the most important things. And so we understand that it's so easy for our lives just to get out of whack, out of hand. I'm sure you're like me. There's been times that I would go home and lay down and just think, you know, I can't do another day of this. I can't survive like this. And I know there's many of you here today that, that walked in and, man, you're taxed. You're stressed. You're overwhelmed. You're in a frenzy. It seems like it's all you can do just to get through each day. Well, there's good news, and that is... God will help us navigate through these things and will help us to be able to get a schedule that's pleasing unto him. If you look in your Bible text, we see Paul writing to the Ephesians. And he's going to deal with this. And I'm going to use verses 15 and 17 as a trajectory for today's message as we learn how to get the chaos out of our schedule. Verse 15 and 17, look what, what Paul writes. Be very careful then how you live. Notice this, not as unwise, but as what? Wise. Everyone say wise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Verse 17, here's the admonition. Therefore do not be foolish but understand what the Lord's will is. Do you know that God has a will for your schedule? Do you know that God has a plan for your day, for your week, for your months, for your years? Do you understand the Lord's will is for you not to be stressed out, not to be drinking Maalox by the gallon, not to be losing sleep at night? God has a plan to, to bless you, a will that will do you good, a schedule that accommodates his plan for your life. And so Paul realizes this. And Paul realizes that the enemy is going to attack our schedule. Because what a clever way. If I can't get them to be bad, I'll get them to be busy. He wins either way. 
And so the Holy Spirit speaks to Paul and says, tell them to be very, very careful. Help them to understand that there's this constant pull from the most important things to the lesser important things, and you're going to have to fight against it. And I'm so glad Paul wrote this because, I'll be honest with you, the default stance of you and I when it comes to our schedule is usually not wisdom, it's, it's foolishness. And so Paul says, man, be careful how you live. Be careful how you plan. Be careful what you say yes to. Be careful what you say no to. Why? Because we're to make the most of every opportunity. And he says, we're not to be foolish, but we're to be wise, understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now, you're sitting here today, probably you said, okay, cool, we understand that chaos in our schedule is, is detrimental and, and we need to be able to process it and, and, and do it right. So how do I do it, Chris? Well, I want to share with you real quickly just a few keys that I've learned in over 20 plus years of being in full-time ministry and interacting with other people. And these keys are biblical principles that I make you this promise, when applied, will change your life. And these principles work and impact your entire life in a major, major way. And so it doesn't matter if you're single or you're a teenager or college or your grandparent. These principles will help you to calibrate your schedule so that you can walk in the will of the Lord and experience the blessing of God. So let's look at this. Number one, if you're taking notes, how do I schedule wisely? How do I get the chaos out of my schedule. Number one, ask the right question. Notice I didn't say ask the right questions, but ask the right question. There are so many different questions that we could ask when it comes to our schedule. But I found there is one all-important question that if you will learn to use it, it will revolutionize your life and change your schedule immediately. I mean, this one question can take down the level of chaos that you're experiencing in a major, major, major way. Take, for example, if I said, hey, I want you to do this with us Saturday night. Come go with us. Many of you would check your calendar and say, well, are we free? Yeah, we're free, so okay, we'll do it. Others of you might say, well, is it right or is it wrong? That's the question you would ask. Not a bad question, just not the best question. And you would surmise and say, well, if it's, it's not bad, then it must be good. Okay, we'll commit. Yeah, that, that sounds great. Now, both of those are valid questions, and they're good questions, but they're not the best question. The best question is this, is it wise? Not is it good or is it bad, not do we have the time or are we free, but the main question you should ask yourself when presented with new opportunities and new situations that will reflect on your schedule is this question, is it wise? So here's what I encourage you to do. When these new demands show up on your doorstep, you get a piece of paper out and you simply write down, in light of blank, is it wise? In light of blank, is this wise? For instance, for, for some of you, it would be in light of our future hopes and dreams, is adding this thing wise? Some of you might say, in light of our current family situation, and that our marriage is not what it needs to be, is it wise to take on something else? Some of you may say, you know what? In light of the fact that we have a 17-year-old in our house and we only have one more year to impact him before he leaves, is it wise to commit to something that will take us out of the house more than we are? Is it wise 
in light of this fact, in, in, in light of that we only have a few days, that we only have an allotted amount of time, that we only have a allotted amount of hours, is it wise? That one question, ladies and gentlemen, will revolutionize your life. Not is it wrong, is it right, are we free, but is it wise? That's why he says in Ephesians, do not be foolish, but walk in wisdom. So that's number one. Number two, how do I schedule correctly and wisely? How do I get the chaos out of my schedule? If you're taking notes, say no to the many good things. To say yes to the best things. Say no to the many good things so that you can say yes to the many great things or the best things. You know, to have this word in your vocabulary is, is, is great. To be able to say no. You say, well, how do I do it? Like this. No. <laughs> See, you just, it's simple. You just do your lips like that. You know, come from the diaphragm. No. That's how you do it. Well, do I have to give an explanation? No. No is a full sentence. You just simply say no. But so many of you do not have this word in your vocabulary, and it's causing your life to go crazy and to be chaotic, and you're so stressed and, and so upside down, you have got to get a hold of your schedule. And you learn to do this by saying no to the good things so that you can say yes to the best things. I, I mean, think about this. Adam had a great vocabulary. See, this one little phrase got Adam in trouble. Adam had a wonderful vocabulary. Every animal, every species that God introduced to Adam, God gave Adam the privilege of naming it. So I want you to think about all the different species and the scientific names of, of everything that exists on the earth. Adam had quite a vocabulary. But there was one phrase that he did not have in his word bank. He could not say no to his wife. <clears throat> Love you, baby. <laughs> Come on, guys. It's okay. Don't be scared. Seriously, neither Adam or Eve could say no. They didn't have it in their vocabulary. And look at the chaos that it's created. So help me out. How are we going to do this? The way to be able to say no to the good things so that you can embrace the best things it's pretty simple, actually, and you got to change the way you think. you got to change the way you think. You have to have a paradigm shift in your mind. It's not a big tweak. It's a little tweak that produces big results. Look what Paul said in Romans 12 and 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Do you see that? Don't conform any longer to the pattern of what? This world. What is the pattern of this world? Chaotic? Running like crazy, no downtime, no time to really work on your, your spiritual life, your spiritual disciplines, to be able to engage and interact in, in spiritual fellowship where your priorities are really not what they should be. That's, that's conforming to the practice of the world. But look what he said, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you will be able to test and approve. Here's God's will again. Look at this. And approve what God's will is. His good, his pleasing, and perfect will. Here's what Paul is simply saying. you got to change the way you think. You cannot think like everyone else in the world and have different results. Because here's the, the, the truth. Your life today is a result of your thinking yesterday. But the good news is... Your tomorrow is the results of how you think today. So we want to allow God to help us to think different about church, to think different about his word, about our time with him, to think different about serving others, to think different about ministry. And as we begin to think different about our priorities, and as we begin to think different than the world thinks, the Bible says automatically your schedule begins to line up with the will of God, and good things start happening. Now, I want to give you a, a, a real practical example of, 
how Melinda and I said no to something good so that we could say yes to something great. Melinda and I, we love, you know, we love our house. We, we love for things to be clean and, and orderly and picked up. And, and then our teenager <laughs> arrived. And a preteen, and I'm like, my God, you know, really? You, you can't, you, you couldn't pick that up? I mean, seriously, why is your underwear on the ceiling fan? Can you explain that? It's crazy. And so Melinda loved things to be perfect, and it just seemed like every time we were home, everyone was having to, to work on the house, to make sure everything was perfect, to make sure everything was put up. And I, I'll be honest with you, we were both at each other. We were so frustrated. We were, our kids were frustrated with us. We were frustrated with them. It was just, it was a bad situation. I'll never forget the day when I went to Melinda. I said, Melinda, what would happen if we chose relationship over tasks? What would happen if we chose relationship over perfection? Perfection. What if we said the house doesn't have to be perfect? Yeah, it's going to be clean. It's not going to be a pigsty. But what would happen if everything doesn't have to be perfect so that we can have more quality time to interact with our kids? See, what happened was Melinda and I said no to a good thing, which was the house being perfect, to say yes to the best thing, which was time to interact with with our children, and with each other. And I cannot explain how that changed our life, how that changed our schedule, and how it changed the atmosphere of our home. Paul writes to us in Ephesians, be careful, be very careful how you live and how you plan Make the most of every opportunity, not as the foolish, but as the wise. Number three, how do I take the chaos out of my schedule? How do I schedule successfully? Number three is realize the cost of chaos. To be able to realize how much chaos will really cost us. I have this written down in my notes. You may want to write this down. As the chaos increases in your life, your relational intimacy decreases. So as the chaos and the schedule that's so out of kelter increases, your relational intimacy decreases. In the two most important arenas, with God... And with other people. I mean, you that are believers, wouldn't you agree that the first thing to get squeezed out when your schedule gets chaotic is your time alone with God? Your time in prayer, your time just to interact with the Lord, to, to be still and to have Him speak to you. Usually it's the number one thing that's squeezed out when our schedules are not calibrated with the will of God. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's costly. To, to not be able to, to hear God's voice or to really have the direction you need for the day or for the week or for the month, it, it's just it's so very costly. And so it, it costs you a great relationship with God, but it also costs you in relational intimacy with other people. I mean, we've seen it happen a, a, a million times before. It's, it's happened in my own life. My schedule has, has been my greatest enemy and has cost me so much. And hopefully you here in this teaching, you won't have to experience what I've experienced because you'll walk as wise. Some time ago, our church, as Pastor was saying, we, we took just a handful of people and God just started moving and the church started exploding. And of course, with church growth, uh, our, our schedules were turned inside out. It was crazy. And we had a family in the church that would help us with our kids and, and take the kids home every once in a while on a Sunday or through the week and interact with them and watch them for us while we worked. And um, I'll never forget the day when, when my son came home. It been a long day for me. I'd, I'd just been working my head off and schedule just psycho. And I, he walked in the house and He's so excited. He said, Dad, guess what? 
I'm like, what, bro? He said, I was over at Mr. DL's house today, and Mr. DL taught me how to ride a bike. He said he took the training wheels off, worked with me all afternoon, and it's the first time ever, Daddy, that I've ever rode a bicycle by myself. Look, here's a picture. I'm telling you, I could have crawled under a rock and died. Because at that very moment, I realized what my chaotic schedule had cost me. It had cost me one of the most memorable moments with my son that could never, ever be recaptured. And it was all because my schedule was not calibrated to the will of God. And you know, I I just want you to understand how important your schedule really is. Because if you'll think about it, your entire life is predicated off your schedule. I mean, think about how your schedule impacts your marriage. For many of you, it's costing your precious time alone with your spouse. And and you can can feel it. You You can tell the difference. I... I I can't express to you how many couples that I've talked to down through the years. And, you know, they say, man, we love each other. We're we're fit for each other. And, you know, we're we're not doing anything on the side. Everything's great. But it just seems like we're, we're drifting from one another. It's like we're in the same house, but I'm sleeping with a stranger. And we're just kind of like two ships passing in the night. And, And what they're saying is the chaos in your schedule can can cost you your marriage. It can cost you your your time with your children and your relationships with your children. It's so important because I really believe this with all of my heart. If you don't have a handle on your schedule, your schedule will handle you. And if your schedule is not right, then the most important things in your life are probably not right. And that's why Jesus says in Matthew 6, look at this. But seek first. Notice that, guys. Seek first. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. You know what Christ is saying? He's saying everything you've ever wanted or ever dreamed of, the desires I put in your heart are found walking in my will. So many of you are looking for the blessing of God. It's found in God's will. So many of you are looking for the touch of God, for the breakthrough that you need so desperately. It's found walking daily in the will of God and in the schedule of God. And Jesus says plainly that if you make him a priority and if you make the most important things a priority, what does he say? All of these other things. What are the things that you're needing? All of the other things that you need. What's the promise? Will be added to you. You know what? That's what I'd like to see for you guys at Copper Point Church. I'd like to see the things that you need added to you. I'd like to see God just blow your mind with blessings and increase. And and a new season of, of revelation and breakthrough. I want you to have those things, and it's found in getting our schedule under control. Now, I've only got one more principle, and it's this, and we'll be done. How do I schedule wisely? Number four is so important. It wraps it up well. If you're taking notes, know that God wants to help you with your schedule. Know that God wants to help you. With your schedule. Why is it that so many of us live chaotic lives? Why is it that we constantly promise that we're going to change our schedules? We're going to do things different. We're going to spend more time with the things that really matter. Many of you, you know, you've been making a promise. I'm going to get involved in a discovery group. I'm going to help in Wake or 212 or in Copper Point Kids or I'm going to be uh, work in the parking lot or I, I want to serve. I want to do more for God. 
but it just seems like it never happens. Why is that? Why don't we radically cut back and take an assessment of our schedule and change things? And the bottom line is, because we really don't trust God. I found that to be true in my life. The reason why my life was so chaotic and my schedule was so upside down and I was so miserable is that I thought I could not take time off. Oh, it's so busy, you know, the world will fall apart if I take a day off. And I begin to think, you know, what happens if, if we rest this day or what happens if we do this or, or that? And I'm telling you, my mind was tormented, and I finally had a revelation. I have to trust God with my schedule. God knows what's on my plate. God knows what you're faced with. But I'm here to tell you, please, commit your schedule. Commit the rest of your time to the Lord's will, and watch God begin to work in your everyday lives Taking out the, the chaotic and putting in the calm. I'll never forget, I was going through a difficult time, and, and one of my mentors, he's worked at Focus on the Family and has, has been in psychiatry for 30 years, just a wonderful, wonderful man of God and one of my close friends. My schedule was getting crazy, and I went to him and talked to him, and he said, Chris, I got a question for you to ask yourself. Every time you feel like you're overwhelmed, every time you feel like things are out of your hand, Every time you feel like your schedule can never be fixed, things can never improve, I want you to ask yourself this question. Is Christ worthy of my trust in this situation right now? I mean, I got so mad. What are you supposed to do with that, right? I mean, are you going to say, Christ, I don't trust you with my life? I don't trust you with the things that I've got to get done? And so, so many times I would say it out loud, is Christ worthy of my trust in this situation right now? And the answer would always come back, absolutely. Yes, he is. I can hear what many of you are thinking. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, whatever, preacher man. You know, if I only had to work on Sundays, I could spend time with God too. <laughs> I hear you. I know what it's like. You got your back, dog, I understand. <laughs> You're thinking, there is no way. He doesn't know what time of life. He doesn't understand. I'm a single mom, and I can't get it. He doesn't understand my job schedule. He doesn't understand that I'm taking care of my elderly parents and trying to raise a family. He doesn't understand that I'm working three jobs, and it's all I can do to make it to a Sunday morning. I understand. But the problem with that is so many of you feel hopeless. You feel like things can never get better. You've lost your faith. Many of you have become numb. It's like you don't even feel anything anymore. And you're just going through the motions. And if I asked you right now, are you enjoying your life? The answer would be emphatically no. I understand all that. But I want you to open up your mind today to the possibilities that God can supernaturally work in your schedule. And as you commit your day and your time to him, he will begin to organize and structure and put all the pieces in place so that you can walk in his divine will. I've got a friend there at the church, Mandy would know him, and God spoke to him to start Celebrate Recovery. He said, but there's only one problem, Pastor. I know God has spoke to my heart to do this. I know it's an important ministry that we need, but my job schedule will not allow it. He said, I can't understand why God would call me to do something and then know it was impossible in my schedule to make it happen. And I said, Chris, here's what I want to do. 
I know what management says, and I know it seems impossible. I know you've never seen it happen with another employee. But let's pray that God will get supernaturally involved in your schedule so that you can launch this ministry and lead it the way you need to. We prayed for a week, two weeks, three weeks. Finally, Chris showed up at the office. He said, Pastor, you're not going to believe it. I said, what? He said, they changed my schedule. He said, it's impossible this doesn't happen. They changed my schedule. And he said, on top of that, they told me that I was maxed out on my pay. I could go no higher and get no more uh, check that I was receiving. But they also gave me a raise. How many like a little of that? I'm telling you, man, when you commit your ways to the Lord, God will give you favor on your job. God will give you favor with people. God will give you favor with resources. God will give you favor, man, to help you put your schedule together in a way that God says, man, I'm going to bless that. That's my will right there. I'm going to help them. Close with this verse. Come unto me. Oh, you're weary and burdened. Look at those words. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart. Find rest for your souls. Allow God to supernaturally help you. With the chaos in your life. For you that are hurting. Come on. And allow Jesus to help you. For the single mom that feels like she can't go another day. Come on to Jesus. Let him help you. For the businessman that has huge financial pressure. And the people closest to you don't even. They don't even realize it or know know about it. Come unto Jesus because Jesus wants to get involved in your life. Jesus wants to get involved in your marriage. Jesus wants to get involved in the way you raise your kids. Jesus wants to get involved in your finances. Jesus wants to get involved in everything. And as pastor has said, all the different areas that get so chaotic, when Jesus is introduced, it goes from being chaotic and stormy to a calm. And you find rest for your soul. Wouldn't you like to have peace? Wouldn't it feel good to lay down on your bed at night and know you're walking in the will of God? Wouldn't it be nice? I want you to imagine if you applied these principles, walk this out and let God help you in the next couple weeks. I want you to imagine what could happen in your marriage. I want you to imagine what could happen with your walk with God I want you to imagine how your life would look as you begin to allow Jesus Christ to take the chaos out of your schedule let's bow our heads maybe you're here today and you're a believer and you say Chris um, dude I don't know how it happened, but my schedule is, is it's jacked up. I'm not spending the time I need to spend with God. I, I, I used to be in the Word. I used to be in prayer. I, I used to serve. I, I, I used to spend more time with my wife or my kids. And, and, and Chris, my priorities have gotten out of order. But I want God to get involved in my schedule. I want this sermon series to wreck my life and to change me. I'm ready for God to, to help me in this area. If you're a believer and that's you, and you just say, man, I'm overtaxed, I'm overstressed, and I know what you're saying is right, Chris. It's my schedule. If that's you, no one look around. Would you just raise your hand, please, by the raised hand? Let's keep them up for a moment. I want to look at them just for a moment. Hands going up everywhere, in the balconies and all across the floor here. Let me pray for you that just raise your hand. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would allow these principles to begin to 
work in these people's lives. Father, I pray that they'd see the light at the end of the tunnel. I pray their faith would rise today, that their situation is not hopeless, that this doesn't have to be the, the way their life is lived. It can just be a season of chaos. But Lord, I'm praying the seasons would begin to change. Lord, that you would begin to take the chaos out of their lives, out of their mind, out of their daily schedule. And you would begin, just like on a chessboard, that you would begin to move the pieces and place them exactly where you want them. Give them rest at night, Father. Let them sleep at night and walk through the day with peace that they don't even understand. While we're still praying, heads are bowed. Maybe it's a little different for you. Maybe, maybe you walked in here today and you're, you're, you, you say, dude, my life is so, so chaotic and I know why. It's because I'm running from God. Chris, I've tried to, to find peace. I've tried to find this rest you're talking about. You know, by doing things in my schedule, by going to the parties, by, you know, maybe it's in the next promotion. Maybe I can find it in the bottle or in some prescription drug or something and Chris I just I need help with the chaos and I've been running man and I'm tired maybe you walked in here today and you don't even know if there is a God maybe you're struggling with the validity of the Bible is it really God's word is what is all this but you feel something down deep inside that's the voice of the Holy Spirit saying make Jesus Lord of your life so that he can give order and blessing to your existence there's some here today say Chris you don't know what I've done man you don't know where I've been you don't know who I've slept with you don't know what I've smoked you don't know who I've ran with you don't understand how bad I am I'm telling you this I don't understand that I don't need to because I know that Jesus Christ has his arms wide open waiting on you today. He wants to be Lord of your life. If that's you, no one's looking around. If that's you, raise your hand right now, please. And say, I want Jesus to become Lord of my life. Thank you here in the middle section for these hands way over here in the far left. God bless you. Over here in the middle, God bless you. Looking all around. Pray with me right here. Thank you. Pray with me, Father, in Jesus' name. Become Lord of my life. Make me a new person. Take the chaos out and replace it with the calm. Lord, I'm tired of being in the driver's seat. I want you to take over and be Lord of every area of my life. And now based on your word, Lord Jesus, you're doing a supernatural work in me. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise offering right now. Would you do it? For all those that just gave their heart to Christ, man, that's something to rejoice about, isn't it? I just want to tell you, if you did give your heart to Christ, would you just reach in that seat pocket in front of you and pull out that card real quickly? Write down your first and last name. Check the box that I committed my life to Christ and take it right out here into the atrium to the table that says, I'm new. They have a Bible for you. They'd love to meet you. And guys, I believe in Copper Point Church. I believe in all of you. And I know that God has you on his schedule for great things. I love you. See you later.